Okay, I'm sorry guys. Um, I'm gonna have to do a part two. This is Eve with Blackyard Gardens part two because um, my video uh, cut out. I think I hit something. Okay, so make sure you get a crate when you do your snow peas. I get a few of those and then I put my peas either in a container. Here goes some in a container and then I put a crate over them so that until the plant starts coming up is protected from the squirrels. I mean, I'm legitimately, the squirrels will really eat them. Please don't think I'm playing with you. So um, I plant those in February. I direct sow them out. As long as my um, soil is, um, I, can, I can put them in. Even if it freezes later on, the peas still came up every year. I've done it for three years now. I've been gardening for four. The first, the first year, um, I didn't put the crate over them. The squirrels got them. I didn't get peas. The second year and, and after, I put the crate over them and I put them out in February. And it doesn't matter if there's a freeze, they still came up. Um, and I think you can, I think I've gone as late so either late february and i've gone as late as um mid-march so like around march 15th i can do my peas then as well but i've done them earlier and they've still they still have done fine if you see you know early april that they're not coming up or something like that you can always sow some more if you want but um i try to get mine as out uh, out early enough that i can get a harvest so um so peas yeah peas are really really easy to grow i mean not easy they just don't require nothing of you so if you can protect them from getting eaten and i'm sorry for the glare but um the sun's hit me a little bit so if you can keep them from getting eaten by the um squirrels and all that then peas are easy there are some things that i start as a, and i'm sorry because my um air conditioning is on but i'm gonna still take you over here because my ceilings are over here but there are some things that I start in, con in um, not containers, but um, like little containers um, because of roly polies and little animals that will eat them. So I only have so many crates. So things like cucumbers, I start them, I mass start them, right? And I, I kind of dig them up and then I'll put them in the garden because I've learned that um, if I put my, if I direct sow my cucumbers, roly polies will eat them. And then um, my beans, I started these like individually in pots and there's still some coming up, but I started these, not in pots, but you know, these little transplant container things. I start these over here because I already have my peas in and typically where I want to um, grow my beans is where my peas already are. So what I'm thinking is once the peas get tired, I'll put my beans in. But I'm thinking that how quickly those beans just grew, I'm thinking that um, I have to come up with a new plan because I think that they're going to want to get out into the garden and I only have so much space. I'm on a, about a quarter acre. And so the, um, the beans, I started from my convenience in the, um, the little transplant containers um, so that I can have a place to put them, you know, a little later, like maybe a week or two from now. So we have peaches, we have raspberries, we have leafy green vegetables, we have peas, I think, did I already say peas? I don't know. Um, that, are, that are pretty easy to grow. This year, so it hasn't been easy for me, um, generically, it has not been easy for me in the last four years, but I am doing well at the, um, the peppers and the tomatoes. And the thing that I did different was I put them in a container. I seen the bull I think last year he had his planted in a container in, in the ground as well. So it gets the moisture from being in the ground, but it gets the container. So when I go to fertilize and all that, it already has um, 
the nutrients are concentrated in that container, but it also has holes in it. So don't think I just put it in there. It has holes in there so it can, you know, it can leach out, but it'll do it slower so that the, um, the fertilization is kind of, it's a little concentrated on the plant. Not only that, but it was also to try to suppress weeds because this will get overtaken by weeds um, almost every year. And you can see weeds in there, but they're not overtaking my plants because of the containers. So I'm thinking this will be my testimony is that um, I will also be successful this year on tomatoes and cucumbers. It's not that I haven't been successful in growing them, or, but I want them to be prolific. So I would, if you're a new gardener, I would recommend trying this if, if, you're, if you're not getting a lot from, if you're, if you're not getting a lot of yields from your plants. Um, please don't be afraid to put some of your kind of invasive herbs. This one's sage, it's not too invasive, but um, like mint and all that, put it in a container because um, it will take over your garden bed. It really will. Let me show you my chocolate mint back here. Going on my stepping stones. Okay, look at my chocolate mint. Hold on, let me show you. Look at her. Look at her. Taking over this whole little garden bed. And it's not a garden bed, it's a, um, it's a wine barrel, okay? And behind the mint, I put in some blueberries. This is a peach sorbet blueberry plant that if you wanna grow something that will give you yields, go ahead and get you some blueberries. But if you're in Ohio and you have clay soil, think about potting it, potting it up, putting it in a wine barrel or in a pot because heavy clay soil will eat, eat your plant. The roots of your plant, it'll suffocate it. You can't, mm -mm. So, okay, wait, I liked my little tree behind me. So, um, blueberries are pretty easy to grow if you, if you put them in a pot. And then um, one, one last thing I'll give you before I let you go, cause I don't, I got a lot in my garden, but um, there's only so much I know as a new gardener. So, potatoes. So, I listen to a lot of YouTube videos um, this is my second time, I think, trying to grow potatoes. The reason I had done it once, but my potatoes were a little bit small. These are pretty easy to grow. And they're even if you get small ones, they're so fun to dig up. Please grow potatoes. So um, the one thing I would tell you, though, is that this little black container, I think it does really good at holding in the moisture. So when you water them, I think it's better than the grow bags. For, for potatoes specifically. So I have four of these up here and you can see how prolific the tomato, uh, the potatoes are. So, so grow you some potatoes if you're new. All the herbs, pretty easy to grow. Um, I have them started. You have, there's some sage behind me right here. I bought that as a transplant though. So somebody else um, had the seeds come up. But all the herbs, I just mass plant them in one little area, like right here, basil. This is cilantro, okay? Got some dill over here, some sage over here. Um, this one is parsley coming up. So, I got some more back there, but um, the point is, just start growing stuff. Just start trying. When it comes to um, when it comes to growing your own food, it just takes you trying. Um, it takes you trying again in the same season that you already tried. It takes your feelings getting hurt. Here goes some chives that I put by the apples. And this had grown up, grown up, uh, grown up. It had uh, grown in one of these buckets back here. And I took it out the bucket or took it out that bucket and then planted it back here by the um, apple tree because it can come back, um, it's a perennial is what I've understood. So it's a it's a herb, but it's also a perennial. So um, this is an experiment over here. I keep trying to close out, 
but I want to tell y'all all I know for whatever reason in one video but this is a um, an experiment here I have a grow bag and then in, in the grow bag I got put a bucket and this is my tomato and I think these ones are my chocolate tomatoes they're a cherry tomato either way I have sun gold and um, I have sun gold and I have a chocolate cherry and I love the chocolate cherry uh, tomato so I hope this helps these are a few things at least uh, over five things that you can grow as a new gardener that will give you a harvest and that are pretty easy for your first time gardening um, the main thing is be willing to adjust what you're doing meaning uh, if you're coming out and you are watering at let's say 11 o'clock and it's really heavy sun try coming out at eight o'clock the bugs don't chase you like all the um, dragonflies that I'll run away from right now they don't chase you early in the morning for whatever reason so I'm learning that gardening goes with like discipline so if you come out around eight you can get your whole garden at least I can get my whole uh, garden watered in about an hour which I use as my garden therapy so that's fine <laughs> Um, I could probably do it in less time and there's certain things that's going to need uh, water more than others but um, yeah try to try to adjust so and then there's other things like don't forget that every plant needs water sunlight and air so like I said about the um, blueberry blueberry plant if it's not producing it might be being suffocated by the clay soil underneath the ground and you can't tell so be willing to pot it pot it up instead of having it in the ground um, be willing to water try to water early if you can because watering in the evening it, it leaves the plants kind of wet and open to disease because um, it'll be it gets a little cooler in the evenings and you don't want them to still be wet you want them to grow for you in the evenings so if you water them in the morning they get the the, you know the water and the refresher they sit there in the sun right they take in that water and then in the evening they're gonna grow for you that's why they're so big after the rain so think about taking watering into consideration try to do it daily if it's not raining that day I know I was really bad at that and then fertilizing so when it comes to fertilizing I'm not a huge like proponent of fertilizing your garden except for with an organic fertilizer so things like chicken poop or um, I'll use like dr. Earth's organic fertilizer I use burpees organics and I think like Job's am I saying it right yeah I think that's another uh, organic fertilizer so I'll put those in when I'm potting things up and then I'll side dress um, with my compost which I turn right back here my compost um i'll side dress with my compost but i'll also add into my compost the organic fertilizer so then the plants um are taking in those nutrients and i do that um i side dress at least once while they're trying to grow and then you can also do um 511 which is a fish fertilizer you just you dilute it with some water and then you go and it's like a nice a nitrogen boost for the plants so you can do that and then I also people do the um, Epsom salt and water I've been doing sprinkling Epsom salt in there when I know it's gonna rain so so and and it's like Eve how do I know when to fertilize um, I just look I listen to a lot of videos because every plant is different but my peppers and my tomatoes I'm doing every other week I'm doing Epsom salt one week and then the next week I'm doing um, the fish fertilizer the 511 so and I'm gonna do that for about five weeks but you see that they already uh, got flowers on them so when they start um, like when they start giving off fruit maybe I'll keep doing it a little bit longer but I'm planning on doing it for about five weeks um, my peas I don't mess with their nitrogen uh, fixer so I don't I don't fertilize them at all my raspberries I throw fruit fruit fertilizer in there just at the base of it just at the base 
and um, I do that when they're uh, flowering um, or leafing out. That's when I usually do that. My peaches, I do the same thing with them. I throw some fertilizer at that. And then, um, let me think. Oh, my leafy greens. Yeah, just a nitrogen. Uh, leafy greens are all green, pretty much like leafy. So you just need nitrogen. So you can do 511 with those, or when you plant them out, you can go ahead and put some fertilizer in there um, when you go ahead and plant them out. So they'll, they should be good. Um, I'm gonna add some bone meal to my turnips to see if I can get some bigger um, turnip, actual turnip plant um, bulbs um, or turnip roots. So yeah. I'm gonna add a little bit of bone meal also to my onions. Yeah, and that's pretty much what I'm doing for the ones that I was telling you about. But every plant is different. So when it comes to um, fertilization, you're gonna wanna do it um, unless you already have a buttload of wood chips. If you already have wood chips and your ground is like so fertile already, then you probably don't have to do this and don't worry about what I'm saying. But if your ground's not already um, that fertile, you gotta, you have to, you have to feed them. So um, those are my tips uh, for new gardeners. Thank you for stopping by. This is Eve with Blackyard Gardens. If you made it to the second video, if you made it to part two, please give me a like and um, share the video with whoever you think it would help. Um, but yeah, I just want to give you some good little nuggets that helped me as a new gardener. I still consider myself new because I am. And um, I love you guys. I hope you guys are growing some things and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.